This is Dr. Peter Montgomery giving my COVID updates on what I call the national lockdown update. And yesterday I did not film an update because I spent my whole time studying. I came back from work and there was so much more even I, more I had to learn. Uh, and so this is pretty much a twofer as I add up two days of, of data ingestion. Part of my uh, discovery is I found the uh, handbook of COVID-19 prevention and treatment. Uh, and it was uh, just recently released uh, by the Chinese uh, team that has been uh, tackling this. Uh, and this is their uh, chief, Dr. Tingbo Leng. And he has a forward where he says, this is an unprecedented global war. The battlefield is the hospital where our soldiers are medical workers. And this war has just begun. This is a very detailed and wonderful source of information covering everything we need to go over. The main thing I want to go over at this point is the antiviral treatment plan. The part I like to focus on right now, because I'm trying to run a positive uh, video program here on YouTube, is the antiviral treatment for a timely el elimination of pathogens. I want to focus on that there are things that can be done. Um, and that they talk about viral treatment. Uh, and the initial treatment they talk about, the low pinavir ritonavir combination, has proven to be no better than placebo. But then they talk about using chloroquine, and then they give a you know details on it. Uh, and for five days, a uh, very short course. And uh, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the reasoning why they're choosing chloroquine and why hydroxychloroquine, which is a less toxic, similar medication that is more widely available, uh, uh, is, is a good option for treatment plan. Yesterday, President Trump announced the FDA making antimalarial drugs available to test as a coronavirus treatment. Uh, the president's uh, doctor then said, well, it's, it's not actually available yet. It has not passed a test, and the president seemed to contradict him, but he goes, but I'm very hopeful. Uh, this is an argument that goes in a lot of people's heads. As, as a doctor, I'm hopeful, but I've got to stick to the science. So I'm going to put out the hopeful that I am also very hopeful from what I've read. And they'll like to present some of the science why this is effective. And maybe some doctors and nurses reading this will see uh, why this is a probably our best bet going forward. As I see it, it's really a, a triple threat. It, you know, I'll show you here shortly that it can prevent infre infection, treat infection, and blunt the cytokine storm, cytokine storm that causes the lungs to fill up with fluid, which is actually what is the fatal uh, change that causes people to die. When SARS broke out in 2002 and went on for two years, spreading to 30 countries, uh, by the time it was done, it had infected 8,000 pe people, killing over 774 with a 9.6% death rate. This was a coronavirus. This is SARS-1. COVID, uh, the current coronavirus, is SARS-2. And this event triggered a lot of research into what can we do as an antiviral? We can't just sit back and, and do nothing. And eventually another coronavirus came along, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome uh, hit and hit Saudi Arabia and went to South Korea. And it was even worse. It hit less people. Uh, 1,300 people with 527 dead, but much more fatal with a fatality rate of 39% of infected people dying. Uh, so definitely something needs to be done before another coronavirus or other virus comes along. So some researchers got to it, and I'll show you that to you in a second. Now, this study was done in 2005, shortly after the SARS outbreak and showed that chloroquine, a malaria drug, which has been around since the 1940s, 
was a potent inhibitor, the SARS coronavirus, stopping the infection and spread. Um, I'm going to show you a lot more detail on here on what it can do. Their conclusion, it was effective in preventing the spread and even showed uh, that it can keep cells from being infected in the first place, which would be prevention. Here's a slide here. It's titled prophylactic effect of chloroquine. That means preventing infection in the first place. The upper left hand screen, we see this area here. This is uninfected cells. They used primate cells. Uh, so this is a standard way of testing things early on in the laboratory. Uh, so they're actually chimpanzees cells, uh, very similar enough to ours. And they showed that, yes, the SARS, when they sprayed it on the cells, got infected. Then using a low dose of chloroquine and then a higher dose and then an a even higher dose, um, they were able to get prevention to 100%. That's completely black. You zoom in there. There is no green glowing uh, marker showing the virus in these cells at all. Uh, and this concentration extra extrapolated out to the human body is easily achievable by pills. So this is a, a tested doses which can be taken in humans. Uh, and so as it actually happens to be the standard therapeutic dose for chloroquine, 500 milligrams can do that. And it was able to prevent it. We use chloroquine all the time for, for prevention, uh, for preventing malaria. Taking one pill once a week prevents people living in endemic areas of malaria from getting malaria. Uh, and so that was showing that it was able to prevent. Here's post-infection. They took cells and already had them infected and didn't treat them. And as all the glowing shows here, the virus is doing just fine. Again, increasing the doses. Uh, you get a, what we call a dose response curve, uh, which means, yes, you're really onto something. This is a true effect. Uh, and the dose response curve uh, shows that the more you give, the more you kill, which means it is doing something. And again, these are doses which are uh, achievable by a oral dose. Uh, this is very effective killing, and it wasn't really much better by going up to really, really higher doses. So there's not a lot of need to go to higher doses as the chart shows here, you're really not getting much significantly better killing of the virus by doing that. And also the timeliness of it. Uh, if you waited three hours after infection, you got some good result. Even waiting five hours, you got results. So once you notice that it happened, you don't have to be immediate on it, but obviously the sooner the better. Uh, and so very, very positive information there. Sadly, that was 2005. Um, I really wish there was a lot more done on that. It's hard to find any other really good solid data on testing it. Uh, there were no human trials done. Of course, they run into huge ethical issues intentionally giving people SARS, a, a disease with a nearly 10% fatality rate, and it had stopped. Uh, MERS came along. I looked in a lot of MERS research. I found that no one tried chloroquine in trying to treat it. I am not an expert on this. I'm sure there was a study somewhere someone will find that'd be fantastic. I'd love to see the results, uh, but I couldn't find any. But I would like to now move on to show how does the chloroquine work and why it could be effective now. The next article, this is 2010. It says zinc, that's an abbreviation for zinc over here. It's a two plus ion uh, and it inhibits coronavirus and another virus is RNA polymerase. This is what's necessary for the virus to replicate itself in your body. It is able to keep it from, uh, from growing, and that is wonderful. Here's a graph showing the SARS virus, and the more zinc they're able to get inside the cell, the less the uh, RNA was able to reproduce down to practically nothing. Uh, and that's very effective. The problem is, how do you get zinc, which is an ion, through the cell membrane? It doesn't like to do it. There is a little bit of zinc inside of all of our cells, uh, but how do you get it in there? And why did they choose zinc as a study? 
There are lots of studies uh, have proven that taking a zinc supplement can decrease your uh, ability to get a virus. Uh, and uh, so that made it a, a good source of a uh, place to start for the investigation. So how does the zinc get inside the cell? And here's a study that shows how chloroquine can get the zinc inside the cell so the zinc can keep the virus from replic replicating. You can't kill a virus because it's not alive. You just got to not allow it to make a trillion copies of itself. Uh, and so they did a study showing how zinc basically becomes an ionosphore, a fancy word for a gate. Uh, it allows the zinc inside the cell. And so the graph over here shows here's someone taking a little tiny dose, which equals how much you probably get in a multivitamin compared to how much you would get a larger dose if you actually took a zinc tablet every day. Uh, and that's the control group. Then they added low doses of chloroquine. And even the tiny little dose was able to get as much inside the cell as taking a big zinc tablet. And if you did take the big zinc tablet, you got a lot of zinc in the cell. And a reasonable amount, dose level higher, you can get to the point of complete saturation. You know, there is no higher. It's 100% uh, in there with as you bump up on the chloroquine dose. Again, uh, fun with the uh, glowing markers. You see more and more when you add the chloroquine and the high dose zinc tablet level, you're going to get lots of penetration of the zinc inside the cells. And again, uh, showing it again here in another thing. It also gets into uh, things within the cells called lysosomes, and the zinc gets in there, and that changes the pH in these lysosomes. The lysosomes uh, in your lung cells, when they're infected, they're full of acids and enzymes that explode and kill the cell. And this is where I call you know, the triple threat. This is the additional thing that it does. By changing the pH in the lysosomes, they're not going to rupture and kill the lung cells. As the lung cells die, everything swells, the skin breaks down. It's like having a third degree burn inside your lungs and those things ooze and you fill up with fluid. So the virus is not replicating. It's just going to die off. The cells are going to heal and they're not going to rupture and cause the adult respiratory distress syndrome, the ARDS. It is the rupture of the cells that releases the cytokines, the chemicals that release called the cytokine storm. We have lots of fancy medicines to reverse the cytokine storm, but I'm a family practice doctor. I'm all about prevention. So I think we have a wonderful tool for preventing the virus infection for pre preventing it from spreading within someone who's already infected and preventing the cytokine storm and the adult respiratory distress syndrome. And so armed with all this information and knowledge, which I'm sure they have, and in much more detail than I have, expert consensus is chloroquine can be used for the treatment of novel coronaviruses. Uh, and this is why they've been using it in China uh, to really good effect. They've had a significant decrease in deaths and they're dropping off. Uh, I have no information that they're using it for prevention and prophylactic. That's where we run into production issues. There's not enough. This was not an expected event and it takes time for factories to crank out enough medicine to create enough doses for everyone in the world to take a prophylactic, prophylactic dose. Hopefully that could be like a malaria, one pill a week, very low side effect. Hopefully that'd be effective enough. We need randomized controlled trials to prove that this works. Uh, in absence of proper randomized controlled trials, what do we do? And that's the situation when we're in today. And hopefully we can get this situation solved quickly. And this is where we run into the ethical treatment that a lot of doctors uh, and healthcare professionals are running into right now. The ethical decision. We get training on how to make hard decisions. A lot of medicine is just logic. Logic, logic, logic. What's the algorithm? What's the best way? Uh, and so here is some guidance on that. 
uh, here's a, a chapter they were studying in, in MERS, and they brought it up, clarifying the recommended strength and evidence. Uh, how do you decide what to do? On it says recommended evidence quality. We rate evidence on A, B, or C. Uh, a would be a properly done randomized control trial. That's the gold standard. Uh, Multi-centered, even better. Um, but that's what we're looking for. We don't have that on a lot of what we do every day. Uh, in the 1980s, we started doing what's called evidence-based medicine, where we stopped going, this is a good idea to hear proof. Uh, and uh, we've been going more and more to that, but we need even more of these randomized controlled trials. And unfortunately, the crisis is upon us and we don't have one. Evidence level B should generally be offered. So A, you should always do it. If you got A quality evidence, that's what you do. When your doctor says, I'm gonna give you this drug for this problem, he's not making it up. He's using level A evidence. B, should generally be offered. One or more well-designed non-randomized trials. A cohort study where you just follow people over time. Case controlled studies. Um, and preferably done at more centers so you get less bias. Uh, uh, and or dramatic results from an uncontrolled experiment. And basically I've been showing you dramatic results from studies with controls, but they weren't done in human beings because it's unethical to give people a highly fatal disease uh, to study them. So I think the evidence presented so far is level B quality evidence, and they've been using it and getting good results. Uh, the Chinese have put some uh, studies, they've done some studies uh, with people on different groups of treatments and from what I've read the chloroquine groups have done the best. They have uh, shown some complete resolution of the virus within five days uh, and better outcomes. Level C is the last level of evidence just to be complete, just expert opinion or descriptive studies. Uh, on first blush, some of these studies just look at expert opinion or descriptive studies, but even then that still meets the criteria uh, level D would be, uh, I know this guy, so yeah, we don't want to go there. Uh, least expert opinions, people who have struggled and dealt and read and been doing this for their careers, uh, their opinions matter. Uh, but they would actually be considered the lowest level of evidence that's acceptable to put a pill in somebody's mouth or to do something to a human being. Um, so I think chloroquine clearly meets this criteria. Now we're the problem of Again, production and availability. I called around, I can't get any hydroxychloroquine, which is the more commonly available and less toxic version of chloroquine. I tried to call out chloroquine for a patient a week ago when I first was reading some of this data, and they said, it'll be available in three months. I get the opinion that the Chinese had already bought it all up uh, by then and had uh, maintained a supply because they were, they were the center of the storm and they needed every last drop of it. Uh, so uh, chloroquine is of course used for people with rheumatoid arthritis and other autoimmune diseases. They need their pills to not be in pain, but this medicine can absolutely save lives and has been saving, saving lives. The hydroxychloroquine is less toxic than the chloroquine. You can die from chloroquine. Uh, hydroxychloroquine, I have given it and the doses that would be necessary to kill the virus and I've had patients who have been on it every day for 10 years or more. Uh, the most concerning thing is retinal damage. It can cause vision decrease. I've never had a patient go blind. I've been in practice for over 25 years. Uh, I'm not a rheumatologist, so I don't have as many patients on it. Uh, but I would say in my experience, I have not seen any significant side effects that I would hesitate to use it in a person with a positive COVID test. The problem with the testing, it is taking us days to get results. Rapid tests are currently in the works. I haven't seen one yet. Our current lab, as of today, March 20th, we are being told, being told four to five days to get a result. I am trying to order Plaquenil for my patients for that four to five days while waiting. And of course, from the evidence, they could be cured by the time we get the result, uh, at which point I would then probably retest them and see if they are cured. Um, so I'm going out on a limb. I'm going to try and get Plaquenil for my patients. Uh, I hope uh, President Trump orders 
the pharmaceutical companies to manufacture this in quantities sufficient to meet the demand because uh, the demand is there. I am begging and beseeching the people who do the randomized controlled trials to do one on prevention as well as treatment. Uh, and I hope that we have enough medicine to get in the hands of the ICU doctors who absolutely need this, for the patients who are on ventilators now, people who have pneumonia now or threatened to being going on ventilators. Uh, so please do not hoard this medication. Please do not uh, take it just in case and have it around. Uh, that's a incredibly strong temptation, and we need to be careful not to do that. So uh, thank you much for uh, getting inside my brain. This is my non-goofy, non-singing doctor brain. Um, I do the singing part because that's when people listen. I know this is boring and probably put some people to sleep, but I had to get out the hard science at this point. Um, I'm going to do some more... Uh, fun videos that are a little more attractive and attention getting because we've got to remember that hand washing is the number one best thing we can do right now and followed by social distancing. Uh, so I wrapped it up in the five W's that we, we all need to be doing this. We are washing, we are waving and not touching each other. We are wiping down surfaces because you, the person can spread it hours and days later on a surface and we are not touching our face. And in case you accidentally did pick it up, in case you forgot to wash your hands, do not be touching your face. Fold your hands. It's what I do. Uh, and the social distancing, the lockdown, uh, it is going to save lives weeks from now. Thank you for doing it, everybody who's doing it now. And the duration needs to be at least three months. Uh, and the duration of this process, SARS went on for two years. Uh, the flu epidemic pandemic of 1918, the Spanish flu, started in the spring of 1918, calmed down during the summer, and killed the most in the fall. September on, we need to get our A game back up. Uh, I, people need not to be lax, lax and taking it easy during the summer. It is going to calm down for the summer, I predict, based on models that I've seen. But we got to be careful when school starts back up and people stop dropping their guard uh after labor day on we're on until new year's so uh let's not repeat the mistakes of the past let's learn from it hopefully we've got new tools and better uh, tactics hopefully we'll have some research clinical trials showing the best effective treatment my bet as of today is chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine thank you again for listening to me i'll try not to drone on again in the future thank you